Creatures of the Night, let's talk Dark Sided Ring Season 5, Episode 3, Terry Gordy in the Final Flight of the Free Bird. Now, we do have his children, Miranda and Ray. They're giving interviews for the show. And we also have Mick Foley, Jim Cornette, Jimmy Garvin, Kevin Von Eric, and David Manning also giving interviews for the show. Now, they do briefly talk about how the children were wrestling. Miranda does wrestle. She uses the Gordy name, even though she feels like she can't live up to her father's legacy. And also, Ray says the same thing, too. He used to wrestle in WWF. I don't know if you guys remember, but he was the um, the tag team partner of Festus. His name used to be Jesse, if anybody remembers that. Now... Uh, interesting enough, Terry started his wrestling career at 13 years old, and by the time he was 14, he was on TV wrestling, and people knew him to be a wrestling prodigy. Now, at some point, he does meet Michael Hayes in Mississippi, and they become uh, best friends in and out the ring, and their their chemistry um, has been absolutely amazing, and that's what they're known for um, and part of the Freebirds. Now, they're also known for... This um, is not necessarily true, but they're one of the very first people to ever use music uh, to make an entrance to the rain. They come out to the song Freebirds, obviously taking um, that name from that song uh, to call their faction the Freebirds. They end up obviously um, putting in Buddy Roberts into the group at some point in the future. Now, they don't focus on his time during um, the time that he was in uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling, but they do talk about his time uh, feuding with the Von Erics in um, um, WCCW. And this is something that they've talked about before when they talked about the Von Erics um, episode and even in Tales from the Territory. So if you guys want to know a little bit more about that, you can watch those episodes. However, this is just an hour show. They cannot fit everything you want to hear into the show and i do feel like sometimes that's a bummer now after they do talk about their um rivalry they talk about it briefly and they talked about how on the road these guys love to party and drink and they would do marijuana and that at some point they ended up bringing narcotics into the mix and that made things a lot more worse for them they also talk about a time where um, when Terry was at a bar, a man was hitting on his wife. He was obviously visibly upset, and he ended up getting into physical altercation with him. The police puts him in handcuffs to arrest him for assault, and then he goes and pretty much assaults the cop car with his head and with his hands handcuffed at the same time, damaging the car, which is absolutely insane. Now, I'll say this, though. If they were to go a little bit more in depth with telling stories about the free birds, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if anybody would get in trouble or anything like that. But I do think that that would have helped make the episode a little bit more darker. And they kind of just didn't really brush up on anything when it came to the lifestyle on the free birds on the road. And I do feel like that would have really helped, um, you know, paint a picture on what was so dark about the, the the life of Terry Gordy during the time that he was with, you know, Michael Hayes and, and, and Buddy and whatnot. So they don't really talk about that at all. However, in 1984, they are getting, uh, you know, calls from Vince McMahon. He's interested and wants to work with them um, in WWF. Now, their first meeting with Vince McMahon, they are drunk as fuck. Now, Vince, I guess he just kind of brushes it off or whatnot and gives them an opportunity. They only end up having a handful of matches in the WWF as the Freebirds before things just didn't work out. They were just always too drunk and just too late to be able to truly participate with the Federation. So they end up letting them go. Terry Gordy did spend years wrestling at All Japan Pro Wrestling, where in Japan, they found foreign huge wrestlers to be very intriguing which made him very popular in the country. Now, after spending years uh, working in Japan, he had issues with tearing both his ACLs and having double knee surgery. And he ended up going to a doctor and the doctor told him that if he wanted to continue to wrestle and feel better over with his legs, he was gonna have to take some weight off. He ends up calling Richard Simmons of all people and he helped him get into shape. Now, he does end up winning the Triple Crown Championship, actually being the first American to win the Triple Crown Championship, and also, till this day, being um, the one to have it for the shortest amount of time, which was three days. Now, he does also 
have a legendary ma match against Masawa that people know and love. Probably some people would say would be one of the best um, pro wrestling matches of all time. Uh, Y'all can go ahead and check that out and be the judge of that. They also do talk about his time teaming with Dr. Death in Japan as well. We'll spend like six months in Japan and then come back to the States for another six months and go back and forth. And he was doing that for a few years. Now, during his time in Japan is where he had his first overdose after a match. Um, they ended up taking him to the hospital and he ended up recovering. However, the next time that he ended up having a overdose, it wouldn't be um, the case where he were able to recover like he did the first time. Now, him being on the road for so long and not seeing his family and going through a lot of pain and going to Japan, he's in these much riskier, bigger matches that isn't so popular um, in the United States. So now he's putting himself more at risk and he's having a lot more injuries and this time he's tuning more into uh, taking narcotics. Now, he ends up going onto a plane and 30 minutes before they can land in Japan, he ends up having an overdose. He wasn't well going into that flight and things got worse. And we have Dr. Death, no pun intended, is in the flight with him and trying to save his life, trying to keep him alive at least until they land the plane. They land the plane and the ambulance and doctors are already waiting. He ends up going to the hospital. He's in a coma for several days before he wakes up and he goes, the first thing he does is take a cold shower. However, um, the doctors realize immediately that he has issues with his motor skills. So him doing certain movements he was not able to do. And also um, there was definite uh, brain damage. So he took some time to rehab before actually uh, training again and getting back in the ring. And as soon as Jim Cornette found out that he was going back and wrestling in the Indies, he went to go take him so he can be part of Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Now, it didn't take very long before Jim Cornette to realize that uh, Terry Gordy is just not the same. Because of the brain damage, he's not able to cut promos. Matter of fact, he's not really able to put thoughts together and to form like sentences. So his promos would sound really horrible. And when he's in a ring, you can see he can do these moves, but the personality and everything that made Terry Gordy special prior to having that overdose, it just wasn't the same. And unfortunately he spent less than a year in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. So now some time had passed and Terry Gordy finds himself against Mick Foley in the round one of the King of the Deathmatch tournament. And this was the first match since his overdose on that plane where people felt like they were getting the old Terry Gordy back. However, that does not last very long. Now, the show ends up showing a clip of a shoot interview that he did and I'm still looking for it. I can't find it on YouTube. I haven't been able to see it, but if anyone know what shoot interview I'm talking about, help me find that because I, I I didn't like what I saw here. Now, on the clip that they did show on Dark Side of the Rain, Terry is physically there, but you can look into his eyes and see that he's not there. Um, that brain damage has definitely have taken control and they're asking him questions. He's not even able to answer. He doesn't remember things. And some of the questions that they ask, the interviewer is kind of answering those questions for him. And I'm just going to be honest. If it was me interviewing Terry and I seen him to be in that state and realizing, okay, something's not right here. I would not put that out there. You know, it's really disheartening for people to take advantage of someone when they're during their worst time. If you're looking at some, anyone to see even a clip from this is going to see something is not right with Terry. Those motherfuckers should have never um, put that interview out. And just by seeing just um, clips of it on the show, I'm looking at it and I'm just like, they should have never done this. I haven't even seen the whole thing. So uh, unfortunately, they end up posting it. And then his daughter said that she was really embarrassed watching that because her father was not well. And these these people end up um, profiting from it by selling these um, shoot DVDs or whatnot when he's just not in the best state of mind because of that overdose. So Michael Hayes calls up Terry Gordy for an opportunity to work in the WWF. He comes to the WWF and he is known as the executioner. He's also wearing a mask and he's not using the Terry Gordy name. 
And everyone on the show seems to be in agreement that they did that to protect his um, identity. So if no one would have known that that's Terry Gordy, um, then that would be better for him because he obviously was not able to perform in the way that Terry Gordy used to perform. Now, he is in this group with Mick Foley and Paul Bear, and it's not looking pretty, but it's an opportunity for him to make bigger money and be able to be on a bigger uh, uh, promotion and work. Now, uh, Mick Foley talks about how when they were on the road that he would often wander away and it would be him and um, Paul Bearer just spending hours and hours just looking for um, Terry Gordy. Whatever the situation is, that brain damage probably played into him probably being confused about his uh, surroundings and just end up getting lost. Whatever the situation is, um, Mick Foley doesn't go into too much detail about that. Now, he does have a match with The Undertaker, and the match is just so bad because physically he's not able to perform the way he should. And also, from a um, mental standpoint, he's not able to, you know, be able to have complete control of his mind throughout the match. And it turned out to be really, really bad. And The Undertaker, you know, let Vince McMahon know that something's not right here. I don't know how things are going to work out. Unfortunately, he does not spend um, too long in the WWF. Now, Mick Foley also does mention that once on a plane, he was sitting, Terry was sitting next to a woman who was taking medications and he asked her if he can have some too. And she did give him some of that medication and he didn't even know what it was, but he was so addicted to taking narcotics that it wouldn't have mattered to him what it was. As long as he would have had some, that's all that mattered to him. And unfortunately, that um, is one of the reasons why he passed away so soon. So after that, um, you know, his time in the WWF, he ends up working in the Indies. And Mick Foley also talk about another time where they both were at the same show. They were doing a meet and greet. Mick Foley line was from the door to God knows where. And Terry Gordy was um, offering pictures. And only two people came up to take pictures with him. And Mick Foley was so infuriated because he's like, this is Terry Gordy we're talking about. This is one of the free birds, one of the most legendary wrestlers of all time. And only two people showed up to take pictures with him. It was really disheartening. Now, after that, he does take time off and he's home. And his children are obviously happy that he's home. They're spending more time with him. They're able to go wherever they want to go with their father. They're getting to know him. And his son said this was during the time that after all these years, he's finally getting to know his dad and they become the best of friends. Now, his son is supposed to end up having a match tag teaming with his father. He can't make it. But Terry ends up going to have this match anyway. And... Um, Unfortunately, after that match, um, he goes home and he ends up um, being unresponsive and he ends up passing away from congestive heart failure uh, due to a blood clot. He was only 40 years old. 40 is very young, you guys. Yeah, you get older, aches and pains and all that stuff, but that's still very young to pass away from a, a, a heart condition because of all those narcotics and drugs that he's been taking over the year and drinking alcohol and all those things, it catches up to you. And sometimes it catches up to you very, very early. And a lot of wrestlers who have done, uh, you know, drinking and, and doing narcotics and hard drugs, they end up passing away from congestive heart failure as well. And unfortunately, it's just something that uh, you know, these, these guys and girls are out in the ring how many days a year? Most often, um, not home. They get depressed. They start taking drugs. They start getting with the wrong crowd, whatever the situation is. And unfortunately, um, they end up having worse issues such as congestive heart failure. Probably he didn't even know he had that condition. Didn't obviously know he had a blood clot either and ended up passing away. And it's very unfortunate because he was super, super young. Now, this was a really great episode and I did enjoy it. When I watch these episodes, unfortunately, I feel like they're not long enough and I feel like we don't get as much information as we should get with these episodes because it's only an hour long with commercials. So that means it's like 45 minutes without commercials. And I wanna see and hear more stories too 
um, certain things they don't talk about at all and then certain things they lightly brush on and then move on to the next now while this was slightly darker um, than the other two episodes well maybe not too much from the last one um, I do believe that this was still um, a great uh, episode and anyone who doesn't know Terry uh, should do additional uh, research on him because since the episode I've been looking up certain things too like it's very intriguing and I hope they have an episode on the free birds it was kind of i kind of understood like michael hayes not being part of this it, it, i understood he has affiliations with wwe i get it but it would have been really cool to hear him say um some things about terry and unfortunately that didn't happen but guys thanks so much for watching my review i'll be back next week and jesus christ i have no clue what the next episode's gonna be about but come back and uh see me talk about it thanks for watching guys bye